Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. For this 45-year-old patient, the hygienic phase of his periodontal treatment was completed one month ago. There are no systemic contraindications for routine periodontal surgery. A radiograph of the right mandibular third molar shows that an angular bone defect is present on the mesial aspect. Notice the loss of the first and second molars. Probing indicates mesial pockets, which are five to six millimeters in depth. The mesial lingual pocket measures six millimeters. A schematic drawing depicts in numerical order the surgical incisions which will be made to gain access to the alveolar crest. The wedges of gingival tissue between incisions one and two will be removed. Incision one is made perpendicular to the ridge of the alveolar crest, extending from the mesial of the molar to the distal of the bicuspid. This incision is made using an Orban knife. The second incision is made with a barred Parker number 12B blade. It removes a strip of tissue from the external surface on the lingual aspect of the initial incision. This strip of tissue could be removed from either the buccal or the lingual side. The third incision undermines the tissue on the opposite side. The barred Parker number 12B blade is used to create a thinning of the flap. The excised tissue is removed. Next, an intracravicular incision is made with an Orban knife into the wall of the mesial pocket of the molar. This incision is extended to the bone in the angular defect. A buccal mucoperiosteal flap is raised with a Bennett elevator. A number seven wax instrument is used to raise the lingual mucoperiosteal flap. The buccal flap is reflected and the mesial surface of the tooth is plain from the buccal. Epithelium and chronically inflamed connective tissue is removed from the intrabony defect. The operative site is rinsed with sterile saline solution. Root planing and curatage of the walls of the intrabony defect is continued from the lingual side. The surgical site is again irrigated with a sterile saline solution and the topography of the defect is inspected. A wide open one wall intrabony lesion is evident. Since the molar has adequate residual bone support and it demonstrates no increase in mobility, the bone contour will be corrected by osteoplasty. An ocean bean bone chisel is used to reduce the mesial wall of the intrabony defect. Also, the alveolar ridge is reduced in height to create a gradual ridge slope towards the mesial aspect of the molar. 
Removal of bone with a sharp chisel is less traumatic to the residual bone than other methods of bone surgery. The surgical site is again irrigated with sterile saline solution. The intrabony defect has been eliminated and a gradual slope of the ridge is apparent. The illustration indicates how the buccal and lingual flaps are fitted together after removal of the bone. Suture placement is accomplished in such a way so as to assure that the flaps are overlapped properly to facilitate healing by primary intention. The suturing is started from the buccal side. The lingual flap is penetrated with the suture needle, as demonstrated in the previous schematic illustration. This will permit the buccal flap to be pulled over that part of the lingual flap where the epithelium was previously removed. Five aught ethoflex sutures are used. After the sutures are tied, the buccal flap will overlap the lingual flap. Notice how closely the flaps adapt to the tooth. Note also that there is some increased exposure of the mesial surface as a result of the pocket reduction. A second suture is placed in a similar manner. In this instance, three sutures are adequate to hold the flaps in close approximation. The reduced height of the alveolar crest is evident. Dry foil is placed over the wound and the sutures. Next, the entire area of surgery is covered with a protective periodontal surgical dressing. One week after surgery, the dressing is removed. At the dento-gingival junction, some evidence of residual inflammation is still present. The sutures are carefully removed at this time. The tooth is cleaned thoroughly with a curette. And polished with a rubber cup and polishing paste. The patient is also instructed in proper home care. One year after surgery, there is adequate attached gingiva on the buccal side of the molar, and the gingival crevice is shallow. The lingual view also demonstrates a satisfactory result. A follow-up radiograph shows complete elimination of the intrabony defect which had existed previously at the mesial aspect of the tilted molar. The patient is now ready for a fixed prosthesis to replace the missing teeth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.